Hey, this is Ryan from Web Eminence, and in this video, I'm gonna cover the different types of companies or entities that you can use to build your website. I've been building websites for seven years, and in dealing with prospects and clients, and also looking at competitors that are out there who are also building websites, I have a good feel for what different types of companies are out there. Um, some of the kind of pitfalls of looking for a web design company um, and some of the advantages or disadvantages to different uh, size companies or companies located in different states or different parts of the globe. So I'm gonna go through the different types of entities or companies you could use to build a website, kind of starting from smallest and then going to the largest types of companies. So the first entity I wanna mention is not really a company, but it's friends and family. I have a lot of prospects and clients who maybe came to me after using a friend or family member to build their website kind of as a favor. So this is great if you're starting off and you don't have a really uh, large budget. So maybe your friend is just gonna do a website for you for free. So this works out great in the beginning, but people often, I have a lot of clients who've run into issues with this because they maybe lose touch with a friend or this person is doing it as a favor, so they're not getting great service or response time. So usually you're gonna outgrow this. Uh, so keep in mind that it's, it's an option if you find a friend or family member to do it, but it might not be a great long-term option. So the next thing I'll mention is freelancers. Uh, these are usually individuals who are uh, working on an hourly basis. You may be able to find them locally through referrals and contacts, but a lot of times you're gonna have to look online at a, at a uh, website like upwork.com that I use to find freelancers. So keep in mind that freelancers are often doing this on the side. So they might have a full-time job, maybe a web design job, and they're doing side projects you know, in their off time. So you might not get the same response as uh, working with a company. Uh, they might be you know, working in the evenings or something like that. So that's important to keep in mind with freelancers. If you go on a site like Upwork and search for web designers, you're gonna get reviews, hourly rates, uh, their location, and then you could contact them to get a price and interact with them there before you uh, choose to work with that freelancer. So the next type of company I want to mention is local web designers or agencies. So this would be kind of be a step up from a freelancer. I'd expect this to be a web designer working full time. Um, so they're always gonna be available which is different from a freelancer who might be doing this work as a kind of like a side gig. But a lot of times to find a local web designer, it might be through a referral, or you might just go to Google and type in web designer near me. So if I were to do that in my town in Colorado, I could just click on one of the Google map listings. And I wanna show you a typical um, local web designer. They're all gonna be different, but this is a good example of one. So if I click on one of their, um, buttons on their website here. It looks like it's a wife and husband team, so maybe just a team of two. Could tell they're kind of creative because it talks about photography, filmmaker, aerialist, writer. So I could probably uh, contact this couple and go meet with them and talk about the project. So some people might really like the idea of having someone local because you can meet face to face. You might pay a premium for this, but it's gonna be worth it for some uh, people looking to just have that personal relationship with a web designer. If you're not sure whether or not you need a local web designer, uh, I actually wrote a post on this topic to kind of explain the benefits of working with someone local and then some of the disadvantages to limiting yourself to only the companies or web designers that are near you. So I'll link to that post in the description. So the next type of company I wanna mention is what I would consider a small agency. So to me, this is like a web design agency of maybe five to ten people they might be local to you you could definitely find some local ones depending on where you're where you're at um, but they might be national too so they probably located somewhere but they're doing work for clients around the country so that's how i operate i have a small team of you know five to ten people and um, i work with clients all over the country to create websites and work mainly over email and phone because we can't meet face to face unless they're local to me. So one of the benefits of being willing to work with a uh, web designer or small agency that's not in the close proximity is you just open up the uh, options a lot. You're gonna have hundreds of companies to choose from rather than just the ones that are in close proximity to you. Another benefit of working with a smaller agency is the price is probably gonna be a little bit 
lower than some of the larger agencies I'm going to mention next. Uh, and also smaller agencies probably have a big enough team where they can also offer other services. Like I do pay-per-click Google ads management for a lot of my clients. Um, some small agencies might offer graphic design, logo design, print, or they might do search engine optimization, for example. So then you could kind of package your services with one company rather than spreading it out to a lot of different companies, which might complicate things for you. So here's an example of an agency, a small agency. Uh, it looks like they have a team of th at least three and they probably operate out of uh, this location, not just like a home office. It says here they have offices in Denver and San Francisco. If I go to the contact page, I can actually see their locations and their address. And then back to the home page, it mentions that they do work with um, apps, so they develop apps. So in addition to doing web design, you could also have an app developed by the same company if that's something you're looking for. So that's just an example of uh, the wider range of services you could get from a smaller agency compared to maybe a freelancer or local web design company. So the next company or entity I want to mention that you could use to design your website would be a large agency. And this could be, you know, I kind of envision this being a company of 30 or more on their team. It could be 100 or more depending on the size. These are usually going to be national uh, companies that are dealing with uh, clients all over the country, maybe even traveling to meet them. So here's a good example of a company like this. It's called BlueFountainMedia.com. I've never heard of them. I just searched and found them. You can see all the services they offer from uh, strategy, branding. They do offer web design and all different types of digital marketing. If we go to their contact page, I can see that they have a New York headquarters and then they have a Chicago and Seattle office. So you can usually find a large agency like this if you're located in a city, but some of them may be willing to travel. You're obviously gonna pay a premium for them to travel to meet face to face. Uh, and these companies are gonna be more expensive in general. So they're probably more for medium size or large businesses, maybe enterprise level businesses that have you know, a wider range of needs in their digital marketing, not just web design, and probably a larger budget as well to afford a larger agency like this. So another entity I want to mention that's maybe even bigger would be like these large uh, hosting companies or domain companies like GoDaddy or HostGator. These companies like GoDaddy started out as uh, domain sellers, but over the over the years they've branched out into selling, you know, email hosting, web design services, and all different types of services. So these companies are large. They're usually impersonal. Even though you could call someone, it's never gonna be the same person. Maybe some of them are kind of moving towards a higher level of customer service where you have a dedicated account manager or something. Um, but these are options. A lot of people kind of gravitate towards these options because these are the companies they find to buy their domain, to buy hosting. So they end up sticking with them and using their website builder or using them to build their website. So I've reviewed a lot of these uh, bigger website builders like Weebly, or the HostGator website builder. And I'm also about to review uh, the GoDaddy website and marketing platform that's pretty new. I've reviewed some of the GoDaddy uh, options in the past, like their website builder. Um, so you can check out my channel, other videos on my channel to uh, get some reviews on some of these bigger companies, these different options for building your website. So I do wanna give a little bit of a warning to watch out for pretenders. Uh, in this web design space. I think there's a lot of people out there, a lot of companies that are trying to be something they're not, or maybe even trying to trick you. So they might be like small companies overseas that are trying to look like a large agency in the US. And there's a good example of this, actually a competitor of mine. And I don't know anything for sure, but when I look at their website, it looks really nice. Um, it's kind of attractive and flashy. They have a lot of services. Uh, one of the red flags to me is that they're super cheap, so it's way cheaper than anything else that's out there. I have trouble finding any information about where they're located, although it looks like they added a New Jersey uh, address, but when I search for that address, it actually shows up as a Regis office building, which is like a co-working shared office space. 
So most likely this company overseas purchased a you know, shared office just so they can have an address. If you read through the website, some of the English is not real clear, which makes me think they're maybe not uh, you know, English speakers as their first language. So there's all kinds of red flags like this. I don't know if this company offers good services or not. I can just tell by looking at it that they're kind of trying to deceive a little bit and look like they're in the US. They also have kind of a live chat that pops up with you know someone that looks like they're in the US. And I even asked where are you located and she said we are in Newark, New Jersey. Another red flag to me was um, that they promoted some awards that they've received, like a Fast Company, 50 Most Innovative Companies. I kind of doubt they're on that list. That's like usually large companies like Facebook and Airbnb. Um, and you can't click this link, so it almost looks like they're trying to show awards that are not real. Maybe they're on these lists. I just couldn't find it. Normally you would link to it so that people can verify. Um, and they do mention that they have global clientele and then notice that they're not even showing the US on this list. So you just need to be a little bit careful of companies that are advertising uh, in the US and probably saying we're in the US with a with an address that they just where they have a mailbox. But if you kind of dive into a project with this company, you might have trouble, you know, with the language barrier and um, communication. So just keep that in mind and watch out for companies that are pretending to be something that they're not. So that's obviously not a complete and perfect list of all the different types of companies that can build a website for you, but I tried to give sort of an overview from smallest to largest, um, and there's gonna be some in between, but it should give you an, a good overview of what to look for. Um, maybe it's gonna help you understand what you need in a web design company. If you're interested in having me and my company build a website for you, I will link to my service uh, in the description below, so make sure to check that out. And then check out some of my other videos, reviews, and other topics in web design and marketing that I've done. I'll link to a video right here and you can watch that next and we'll see you there.